What's up everybody? Welcome to Race Tech. My name is Wyatt and today we're going to talk about why the heck we set SAG and uh, how we get that accomplished. So the first reason we're going to set SAG is we're looking to get the balance of the motorcycle correct. Um, so basically we're wanting to get that motorcycle riding in a balanced state. That way our geometry and everything is working right. That way we have a good handling motorcycle. So let's go ahead and jump in on how we get the SAG set. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get an extended number. So we want to find out the full extended number with the bike on the stand. Uh, with the wheel not touching anything, a couple of key points we want to make sure is make sure that our linkage is not resting on our uh, stand or anything like that or anything that would create the bike to actually be squatted at all. So now what we want to do is we want to head and we put a little sharpie mark on our fender. If you don't want to put a sharpie mark on your fender, you can actually put a piece of tape then put the mark on there, pull it off when we're done. What we want to do, this bike's leaning a little bit of an angle, so it appears as if it's leaning forward when this bike is level. We're going straight up from our axle to our fender. So we want to have a nice straight line of contact there and we go ahead and make our mark. We always go from the center of the axle. So we're going to go ahead, insert our tape measure into the end of the axle and we'll go ahead and go up to our mark. So in this instance, we have 585 right to the bottom of the fender at our mark there. So now we'll go ahead and grab our rider. Today we're going to use Richard as our, as our rider. So we'll pull our bike off the stand. Go ahead and have him jump on the bike. Um, we're going to go ahead and use uh, Jaime to go ahead and hold him up. If you didn't have a, a third person, you can always get next to a pole. And just lightly balance yourself with the pole. Main thing here is you're not taking any weight off of yourself or the motorcycle. You just want to use it as a balance point. Um, as you can see, he's standing. So one of the big key points we use is actually the rider standing up. Reason being is that creates only two contact points, which is the pegs. Um, as the, where the weight is actually being applied. Uh, when they're standing up, one thing we need to keep in mind is that their knees are spread away from the tank, that they're not gripping the tank with their knees, and that they're light on their hands. They can use their hands as a balance point, um, but we don't want them putting any excessive weight on the front because that'll unload the rear and uh, change our sag number. So we'll go ahead and take our measurement with him on the bike. So we'll go ahead and extend our tape. And what we'll do is go ahead and compress the bike, let it come up on its own, and that'll be our low number. So for right now we have 503. And then we'll go ahead, we'll lift up on the bike and let it come down on its own nice and slow. And we have 508. So this bike actually has five millimeters of stiction. Um, so that stiction zone being, we have a little bit of a difference between the high number and the low number. So we'll go ahead and average that out and that'll be our sag number. Cool, so we went ahead, we took our measurements with our rider on the bike and with it on the stand and it fully extended. So our extended number is actually 585. With him on the bike, averaging between our two stiction zones, we're at 505 and a half. So this bike would be right at 79 and a half millimeters of sag with our rider on it. Um, so next thing we'd do is go ahead and actually adjust our sag. Um, so basically what we're gonna be doing is actually at, on this case, we're gonna remove preload to actually go ahead and let the bike sag a little bit more. Um, if we were going to go ahead and raise our number, we'd wanna add, add preload to the spring to go ahead and raise that rear end. So we'll go ahead and remove some preload right now and get this thing riding right. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust our sag. And with this bike in particular, we have a plastic collar with a lock ring around it that just tightens with a uh, Allen. Uh, these would be found on WPs and some of the newer Showa stuff. Um, the other style would be two lock rings that actually lock together. In that case, we'd go ahead and use a preload punch and a hammer. So for this one, we'll go ahead and loosen our collar. I like to take a Sharpie and make a little mark on our collar. So a cool, uh, cool thing you can kind of do with uh, common dirt bikes these days, one turn, one full turn of the preload collar is going to equal roughly three millimeters of sag, pretty much across all brands makes model. Um, it's a rough estimate to help you just make quick adjustments and get in the ballpark really quick. Now that we went ahead and loosened our lock ring, we're going to go ahead and remove some preload to bring the rear end on this thing down uh, to get it set up for Richard here. So I like to use with these plastic ones, I used to like, like to use a preload punch and then just to help myself push um, as we spin. I don't like to hammer them because it starts to notch out the plastic. Um, so we'll go ahead and start removing some preload to bring this rear end down for him. So now we've made our adjustments. Now we just need to go ahead and lock the collar down and then recheck our measurement. Cool. So we've made our adjustments. I always like to go ahead and recheck my extended number depending on the shock. Sometimes when you add more preload or take preload off, your extended number might actually change. Uh, so we'll go ahead and verify our extended. So now that we went ahead and got our preload adjusted, we threw our rider back on the motorcycle. Once again, making sure his knees aren't gripping the bike too tight and he's not putting much weight on his hands. 
So we're looking for 96 millimeters of sag on this bike. So we went ahead, the number we're shooting for is 489. So let's go ahead and see if we got it. Perfect, landed right on it. So now this bike is ready for him to rip. Now that we've got this sag set, this bike's to rip. A couple key points we wanna to touch on or things to keep in mind when we're setting sag. A um, Couple things that could stop us from getting a sag number that for some reason makes sense. Maybe it's stopping early. Um, would be if somebody's on the brakes when they're actually setting the sag. So anytime you add the brakes as you're standing on the bike, it kind of puts the bike in a bind um, and the bike won't go all the way through the stroke like it's supposed to. Uh, another thing, chain tension. It's a big one. Every once in a while we get people that go, they can't get their sag number. Um, it's, it won't go down past a certain number. Chain's too tight and it's actually creating a bind there. Uh, knees open, like we talked about. Um, lightweight on the handlebars. Just make sure they're standing up nice and straight. And this is something you want to do in full gear. Uh, for this demonstration, we were in street clothes, but you'd want to go ahead and do this in full gear. If you can't do it in full gear, a uh, great thing to do is set it about two to three millimeters high. And when you add on normal gear, uh, you'll land right around that uh, determined sag mark that you're looking for. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Go ahead and check us out on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to call in here to Racetech or racetech.com um, for anything you need.